Please stand. Please stand for the reading of God. Proverbs 24:16. For the righteous man falls seven times, he rises again, but the wicked are brought down by calm, calmity. Matthew 6:25-26. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. You are not much more valuable than they are. You may be seated. So, I don't know if uh, I heard good morning this morning from everyone, so good morning. morning. (laughs) Um, I have my notes because I've been told by a couple of people I love to do rabbit trails. So, we're going to pretend this is going to work well for us. Um, I just want to say, before we start, I want to thank Pastor Ed for allowing me to, to uh, speak this morning and to have an opportunity to uh, share with you guys uh, what has been laid on my heart uh, over the last while or so. And uh, also thank you, uh, my church family, for um, giving me this opportunity to lead our teens, to be a part of their lives and to be a part of the parents' life. And uh, I just want to thank you for that uh, um, whole opportunity and the benefit that comes with it. Um, this past uh, weekend, we had a teen retreat, and uh, I think it went pretty well, because uh, the simple fact is, yesterday, almost uh, all were ready to go home and couldn't keep their eyes open towards the end of prayer, and so I must have done something right, wear them out, right? Uh, and so I was happy for that. Um, but in that, we uh, dug in some uh, really good conversation we got into God's Word, um, and with that, I wouldn't say that it surprised me at all, because teens at that age are kind of like the young kids. They fidget, and they fart around, and you don't think they're paying attention, and then you ask the questions, and they're like, hey, I got that answer, and I'm taken back by it. So. It was some hard conversations we were having. We are going through a study that uh, is a series called Can I Ask That? And it's amazing. And, and the feedback that we're getting, I think the growth we're doing as teens, uh, and uh, I think it's overflowing with each other um, because, um, well, they like each other enough to start sitting together. And uh, to me, that's a huge benefit. I like that uni- you know, uh, unity that we have. Um, and we also had some fun times. Um, I got clobbered uh, big time when we did laser tag. It seems like every time my uh, vest went off, uh, someone was right behind me to make sure it stayed off. And uh, I fell below the the top ten pretty easily. But it was a lot of fun. Um, I was worried that uh, it was going to be a lot of work. And uh, with my physique, uh, I didn't want to disappoint by getting oxygen or going to the hospital. But it didn't work out that way. All I had to do was... uh, pretend. Uh, We also did some bowling, and uh, bowling was an experience in its own right uh, with uh, every aspect. Uh, But I would say this, that um, there was no bitterness. So uh, I knew what we were talking about this weekend had some impact, and I knew that um, the influence and the opportunity I had for them over the last nine months is starting to sink in. and not just being voided words that I speak, uh, because good attitudes were there. And, and I really loved that. And I felt, with having the games and so forth, what better way to find out what a team really thinks, right? And, and when they start losing or they start winning, it's kind of how, you know, how they're going to react to it. They're going to have a good attitude. Uh, a poor winner, 
rather sore winner and poor loser, vice versa. Um, but it was an awesome weekend. We really uh, enjoyed the time together. And uh, I do want to also thank um, Matt and Shauna and Ryan and uh, Josh and uh, most importantly, uh, my wife, uh, Andrea. She uh, kept me in line. She kept us fed. And uh, most important, she kept me in line. And so I thank her for that. That's, that's important. Anyone knows who I am uh, with the teams, uh, I need to be kept in line sometimes. Uh, I wonder. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, our worship team, that was uh, amazing this morning, right? I mean, whoa. Yeah, let's, let's, give, them, let's give them some loving on that. <laughs> So, with all the excitement we had this weekend, um, I do want to share a little bit of what's laid on my heart, and uh, hopefully uh, you guys will enjoy that journey together with me this morning. Um, it's been interesting talking with people over the years and hearing reasons why they don't come to church or even uh, want a relationship in Christ. Um, I used to be a little abandoned of approaching conversations like that because I myself was really green and not know much about Jesus, but I know I needed him. And when I started to grow in that relationship, questions like that come up with sometimes strangers. Um, I'll say this, I'm in sales, and so I can pick a conversation, I feel, with any stranger and uh, have a rapport in a matter of uh, seconds. And uh, God has blessed me with that. And so I only say that because sometimes these conversations are not something that we really go through uh, with. Um, we don't really go through with that um, ability to talk to people so easily unless God's involved, right? So here are some few reasons and comments that I've heard over the years. Um, if I step in the church, I'll get struck by lightning. That's usually the one that kind of like, oh, okay, it's not going to happen, but it's an excuse, right? Um, or this one. It's not really my scene, and I do church in the, in the wilderness or out in the, uh, um, out in the woods, enjoying nature and God's creation. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, but I've learned over the years that uh, to truly be growing and have that maturity, we need to be around like-minded like individuals. And God gives us areas like this building to come together and sharpen each other, to hold each other up. And it's kind of hard to do with uh, Bambi out in the woods, right? I mean, or turkeys or anything like that. But they do have its place. Um, but, let's see here. But the one thing that gets to me most, that, that one thing that fires me up, um, bo both with hope and anger, I don't know if that's even possible, but that's what I deal with, uh, with that, um, is this. I need to get right with myself and on the straight and narrow path before I can ever think about having a relationship with Christ and enjoying that. That there is, uh, as I mentioned, it, it brings me hope and, and it makes me upset at the same time because uh, that's probably one of the biggest lies I feel the devil throws at us as uh, unknowing out in our community with some of the folks I've ever talked to of why they will, really want a relationship or even come to church because they got to get themselves right first. Um, and I usually get the, the comment coming back to me of, um, look at you, Kevin, KJ, look at you. I'm sure you thought that way at, at some point in time before you came to Jesus and came to Christ. And uh, it's at that point that I would say God talks to me often and says, all right, buddy, you got that maturity going on, so now it's time to go to work. And uh, he allows me to really uh, come back with that 
conversation or that response of, you know, you're right. I used to think that way. I used to think that I had to be right with God before uh, ever coming through these doors, ever wanting a relationship, because why would someone that great, that powerful, ever want to have anything to do with nasty old me, you know, full of the, the drugs and alcohol and the anger and the uh, broken relationships that I get myself into. And so I figured I had to start myself out right uh, on my own. And uh, I tell him, I was wrong. I was wrong. When God, when God showed up in my life, and as that, um, that's not there no more, but as that little uh, visual I did this morning, I think that's perfect evidence that God really doesn't care of where we are, where you are, where I am in life. It has nothing to do with how good you are going to be and how good that you need to be before coming to his, his life and his, or his grace and in his presence. Um, I've learned the, the dirtier the better for Jesus, right? We tend to take it a little more serious when we're down in the, in the dumps than we do when we're resting high on the mountain and things are going good. And uh, to me, that's, that's always a thing that, I, that marinates in my, my heart and kind of hits that reset button when I'm living up here, right? And uh, it's a good reminder. Um, conversations that I have with them as well in that same breath, they're like, you know, aren't you worried about losing friends? Aren't you worried about how life is going to start changing you? And maybe you're not going to fit in with that crowd, you know? And I, my response is, yeah, I used to think that way. I used to think, hmm... If I stopped hanging out at bars and hanging out in the woods uh, with my hunting buddies uh, and drink all day, boy, what fun am I going to have? Um, if I go out and party and at Christmas parties or events and I didn't have Jesus, you know, at the time I didn't have Jesus, you know, I'd be giving up all that stuff. And it made me wonder, maybe worry, right? Maybe worry about, you know, what is the world going to look at me and how they're going to filter that through and am I going to be judged? And, um, I think of Matthew 6. Constantly go back to that. Because uh, as it was mentioned, and I'll read it again, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body. What you will wear is not life more than food, and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds in the air. They do not sow, they do not reap, or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? I watch birds once in a while. Sometimes I have that privilege to uh, look at the crows outside of uh, our storefront. And every year they come back and they do their business on all of our cars. And they have babies. And sometimes those babies mature and they come back. And I know they're the same because they're the same ones that like to mock me when I'm coming into the store, right? Squawk all the time. So they have to be the same. Um, but I tend to think that am I not as important or important as birds that God won't forget about me? And the answer that I always come back on that for myself is, I am just as important as these birds. I may live a crazy life at times, but God is never going to leave me or forsake me. He's not going to go, well, you didn't do good this week, so uh, why don't you come back and get yourself right with it? No, what, I, what I've learned, what he does to me, is say, hey, come to me. Put those burdens, put those, those issues that we have down before me and walk away. Don't, don't put it down. Say you're sorry. Pick it back up and wonder why no change has is, is happened in my life. I don't know about you, but that's pretty encouraging when I think about that verse that way. I think it's something that uh, gets me through some of those tough days at work. And I'm sure with our teens, 
some of those things that happen inside the walls of school on work week or on a school day. Um, It also segues into probably uh, one of my utmost favorite uh, verses in the Bible. Uh, it was the one that was read first thing in, in this morning, uh, Proverbs twenty four sixteen. I shared that on a retreat um, when we were in Pasco a couple years ago. The pastor says, is there any uh, verses that anyone really loves to live by? Something that really talks to your heart? And I'm sitting there, and I'm like, mm, no, there isn't. And God's like, no, there is. And I'm like, no, there isn't. Long story short, he pushed me, and I vocaled, or I voiced that. And when I did, I um, saw a lot of folks nod their head of, yeah, I love that verse too. I never even thought about it. I knew it was somewhere. And um, I just love reciting it, you know? Though the righteous fall seven times, they get back up. Though the wicked fall when calamity strikes, it's a, it's a scary, awesome, encouraging word uh, that God has given us. And um, this verse has powerfully impacted my life. Um, it speaks to my soul. And... Uh, I would easily say, if it's not obvious enough, it's uh, my life verse. It's something that uh, I got some tattoos. Uh, I would love to get a tattoo of that, but we'll table that for a different conversation, different day, right? Um, but it's the foundation of my own life and of my family. And it's something that, uh, um, if you ask any of our teens, it's the encouragement that I give them. And uh, there's times where I'm going to pick on Eli Brew. He rolls his eyes when I bring it up because God has a weird way almost every Sunday. Not everyone, but most Sundays that just before we leave, we finish talking and we're getting out of the Word. And he's like, oh, hey, why don't you uh, fit this into what you're teaching the kids? And I bring up Proverbs 24, 16. And it's like, oh my gosh, here he goes again. But, oops, okay, I thought I killed it. Um, but here it is, you know, I tell them, we're going to struggle. When we become believers, when we start walking that path, we're going to get knocked down. We're going to get shoved around. We're going to get, uh, in some cases, losing of relationships. Um, and we're also going to be tested. And what I share with our teens is the most important thing is to get back up. Right? But not just get back up. Get back up with that, that purpose, that sense of, you know what? I love Jesus. I'm not going to allow this to uh, define who I am in Christ. I'm not going to allow this to uh, make me stumble and have me have my own pity party. No, get back up with that purpose of saying, you know what? The only one I answer to is Jesus. The only one that, that cares so much is Jesus. You know, he's come, right? And he died for us. And I'm pretty sure that he's big enough. So when we stumble, his arm's going to extend out to each and every one of them that is going to be willing to take it and get back up. And uh, I think the teens are getting that. I really do. But there's also um, the end of that verse of how the wicked... Uh, stumble when calamity strikes. To me, that's an encouragement to know that there are people out in this world and out in our community and our schools and workplace that don't know Jesus and they tend to find themselves of, woe is me. I go to church, KJ. I uh, read my devotions every day. Why am I struggling so much? And uh, I often think, how are you getting back up? Are you getting back up with the attitude of no, this isn't going to define who I am? Or are you getting back up with, uh, well, that's just life. I'm going to carry this the next time. And then I'll bring it up and say, well, this is why Jesus is so tough on me. Or why I can't have that relationship. 
And uh, it's a hard lesson for me to learn over these years. I still deal with it. But with that being said, also when I talk to people, I think the most amazing thing to hear that comes out of uh, people's mouths is I believe in God. I think that's awesome, right? We'd love to hear when people say, I believe in God. I, I do. But here's the thing. I started thinking about this uh, a little bit ago, or a while ago, and uh, I believe in a million dollars. Does that make me a millionaire? I believe in the eating right and exercising. But does that make me healthy? And be quiet, teens. I believe in happiness. But I ask my kids, I'm not always a happy person. So do I uh, fall short of the game? Just the other day, I was going through some social media. And uh, I see that a lot of people believe in a lot of things. A lot of things, sometimes not so great. Um, but here's the catch. If all we're doing is believing, with no action, how in the world are we ever going to claim victory in Jesus? It just comes down to that. We need to actively pursue Christ, immerse our lives in his word, and surround ourselves with like-minded people. So as I started off with some of those excuses about I do my time in Jesus out in the nature's way. That's all fine and dandy. But boy, there's so much more than just sitting out in the woods and enjoying God's beautiful creations. I think that's amazing. But like I said, Bambi ain't going to be preaching to you on Sunday morning. And this is where I really feel... Once again, where Proverbs 24, 16 comes in heavy in my life. And what I had mentioned before, I love talking to our teens about. I touched briefly just a moment ago that, you know, life is going to be crazy. Watch some TV. Read some newspaper. I don't know if people read newspapers anymore. I don't know. Everything is online, right? Or better yet, walk in our community. I think that uh, really speaks volume of how uh, our life and our world is today. And as I mentioned, when we get knocked around by life, and I tell the teens, you know, we need to remember a few things, or in this case, two, two important things. One, get back up, as I mentioned earlier. But just don't get back up and brush yourself off. I tell them, no, get back up with the purpose. I know I mentioned that, but I need to say it again. I always think repetitive must be something important there, right? God, God does that for a reason. With the attitude that this situation is not going to define me and how I'm going to be living for God. And number two, know that he will always be there and get us through everything, no matter the bad, the good, the ugly. His grace and love is bigger than we can ever imagine. I learned long ago that all I need to do is stop believing in God and start actively trusting Him praying to him, loving others with his love. 
to bring peace to others through him, and most importantly, live my life for him. Believing in something just doesn't uh, have the same weight that it used to. You know, I believe this rock is going to go upside my head and hurt me. Easy took that a lot more uh, serious than we're on the internet saying, I'm going to whip this rock upside your head and it's going to hurt you. You ever try to throw a rock through the internet? All you do is break the, the screen and your computer. It doesn't work that much. It doesn't hurt. So I'll end in this this morning. That's why I find myself on fire to unify our teens and this church and everyone that walks through these doors. I want to be that encouragement that says it's okay to embrace change. And maybe that means moving a little cheese. I think of that little mouse and that cheese that Pastor showed a couple of handful of weekends ago. Um, sorry, I don't remember it, so, but you guys remember that. Sometimes we need, need to move a little cheese in our church. And we need to set aside our wants and instead focus more on what God wants for us and how God wants to grow our church. And I don't mean grow this church in numbers necessarily but grow in the sense of unity, having those relationships with one another that we normally wouldn't. Maybe that means uh, we squish together a little more on Sunday mornings. My teens promise to uh, take showers so they smell good when we start doing that. So let that be an encouragement to you guys. Not to take a shower, but uh, sit next to them. Well, yeah, take a shower. Oh, yeah. And, and I guess take a shower, too. Because I know my boys. Whew! <laughs> so, uh, I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity this morning. I hope God uh, has spoke to you with some of the rambling that I did. I hope that he has the opportunity to continue to work in your hearts. And I just want to end with this before I turn it over to Pastor Ed. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for the works that you uh, are doing in my life and in my family's life and the life of this church. I know at times it feels like uh, it's really minimal with things that are going on in, in our community and with this church. But Lord, our teens and myself see it as uh, something more than just small movements. They're big strides. And I just pray this morning that you would continue to work in our hearts and continue to uh, give us that encouragement and remind us that you never abandoned us but we do walk away from you sometimes and you stay exactly where we need to be or where you need to be so that we can come back to you. So Father, um, as we go into a new work week, I just pray that you pour out your blessings onto us. Have us glow in a way that people are going to ask, what's the matter with you? And give us that encouragement to share our testimony, to share a little bit about ourselves, so that we can reach those outside these walls um, to show them what a relationship with Jesus really is. And finally, Lord, I just pray for uh, each and every one in this congregation. I pray for those that uh, aren't currently here due to illnesses and for situations, that you just help us, though, to come together unified as one. And really stop believing in you but like I mentioned earlier, trusting in you. Allow your works 
to really stir us up on the inside so that we can answer with an obedient yes. Thank you for all that you do. In your son's name I pray. Amen. Thank you, guys.